Hi guys, welcome to this powerful video with Apostle Michael Robo. This particular video was carefully selected and edited to improve your knowledge on spiritual things and draw you closer to God. Don't forget to like this video, share with loved ones and family, and subscribe. Stay tuned. And I said as you grow in light, a point come where you migrate from just manifesting light you become a judge in the spirit. So what you do is that you separate light from darkness. It's one thing to manifest, but darkness will still attempt to hold sway. But when we grow up, what we do is that we give boundaries to darkness. And that was what God did. He said in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And the earth was void and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the spirit of God moved upon the waters. Now God was moving but darkness was still upon the deep. Now God is light. 1 John chapter 1 verse 5. But light was moving yet darkness was upon the face of the deep. Because it's one thing to shine. It's another thing to tell darkness its boundaries. So you can be a believer in your family shining. Yet the devil will rule. People will die. Things will go wrong because you have not awakened, been awakened to the responsibility of dividing between light and darkness. So it's not enough to shine. It becomes enough when you develop the capacity to tell darkness, stop here and let light have expression. That's the office of the judge. You know, Peter was walking with Jesus and he said, in a moment, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. That's light. And Jesus said, flesh and blood have not revealed this to you, but my father which is in heaven have revealed this to you. He from the frequencies of Zion. He entered into light and he attracted and reflected it. But the next moment, Peter drew Jesus to the side and Peter began to transmit from darkness. So Peter could shine but Peter could not divide between light and darkness. At one point, he burned with illumination. At another point, he was darkened like the devil himself. A prophet, are your judges that told us that you're coming to sonship when you can divide between light and darkness? So even though Peter was shining, he was a babe. And the devil knows. You know, Adam was walking in the garden and glowing like the sun. And he came, he said, you are lion. You are tiger. You are crocodile. He was just manifesting, manifesting, manifesting. Until darkness showed up. And said, did God really say, you should not eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil? And the guy became confused. Because he could manifest, but he didn't have capacity to divide. And until you can divide... You are not entitled to an inheritance. Because anything God gives you can be lost. That's why many great anointings are lost. That's why many great heritages are lost. Because men don't grow to places of dividing. So the guy can have all the influence. He can have the fame. He can have the power. He can have the glory. He can have the platform. If he cannot divide, the devil will come with assurance. In fact, most times he waits for you to rise. That's why Paul said... Do not exalt a novice. Because when he's lifted up, he will be lifted up in pride. And the devil will strike him. He will fall into the condemnation of the devil. Because he can't divide. So our body in the morning was to show us how to divide between light and darkness. So that you can keep the testimony of God and hand it over to another generation. Paul kept it so much. He said, I have run my race. I have finished my call. There remained for me. He knew. And he didn't just know his assignment. He knew his reward. There remained for me a crown of life. And he said to Timothy, the things that I have given to you, commit the same to faithful men who shall be able to teach others. So he carried it as an inheritance and he handed it over to another generation. Is a business in the spirit. And I said the way we come into that realm. Is to walk in the light. As it is in the light. Walk in the light. As it is in the light. 
And I said the first way to walk in the light is to accept and acknowledge everything God says you are. If you don't accept and acknowledge it, you can never walk in it. The reason many people are in sin today is because they never knew it was possible to walk in holiness. They taught them and it became part of their, uh, uh, their, their consciousness that it's impossible to live above sin. So when you say this man is holy, somewhere in their heart they are saying, hey, once in a while he does some things. When you tell them nothing is impossible, <laughs> somewhere in their heart they remember a circumstance that was not handled and they say, my brother, forget who, in this world, is little by little. When you tell them you have authority over devils, they tell you wisdom is profitable to direct. So when time comes to journey to the village, they say, we will know they go village. Unconsciously, it has been built into their minds that they are not what God says they are. So the guy falls. He rises. He cries to God. He falls again. He rises. He cries to God. So he now thinks that it is normal to live in sin. Even if you try, you can never live above sin. Because it's not a reality in your spirit. So Paul said we should be renewed in the spirit of our minds. And the way to do it is to lay hold on everything God says you are. When God showed you this vision, sir, there was nothing that suggested it will happen. But you came and you kept saying it. And you kept saying it until the buildings rose. Until the men came and today it's a system. That's the same way we build our lives. Nobody became big just by appearing there. God told them they took it and they believed it. And most times, if you look back at the pictures of the men making impact today and see them when they started laugh. Because they don't look like it. But they kept talking what God said. They kept prophesying what God said. They kept acknowledging, accepting, and conforming to it. And a point came. Where that utterance came from, the life began to power it. The power began to power it. The abilities of the spirit that brought that utterance began to give support to it. And one became two. Two became three until it became a nation. The Lord will tell you, you are his righteousness. But when he told you that, you were a fornicator. You were a killer. You were a liar. But he said that the communication of your faith becomes effectual by the acknowledging of every good thing that is in you. God tells you, you are an apostle to the nations. And the last time you checked, nobody in your lineage, you are the first person that spoke in tongue in your family. And it looks as if, how <laughs> it won't happen. But he came and saw you in your crude state. He said, you are an apostle to the nations. You didn't even dare to believe until God quickens you and you begin to affirm it. You begin to affirm it. And after a while, you look back five years later, you discover you are, nowhere you, you are no more where you used to be. And after seven years, somebody said, come and minister in my church. After ten years, all of a sudden, that which looked as if would never happen became your natural state. Because you accepted it. You acknowledged it. And you began to live it. It applies in every sphere of life. And I said. When these things begin to happen. What happens is that. The realm comes with its laws. Every dimension we call forth. It comes with a requisite consecration. Because what sustains the realm. Is the consecration it stands upon. I went for a meeting and Randy Clark ministered to me. He said, go and walk in the glory realm. And I went home. In two weeks, everybody I prayed for was healed. And I said, I've entered something. And instead of aligning to the suggestions of the spirit and the movements in my soul, when those dimensions began to happen, I started telling everybody, oh boy, nothing is impossible. So I was confessing, but I negated the consecration requirement that came with the realm. And after two weeks, the realm began to vaporize. And it lifted from my head. That's why Paul said to Timothy, the things you have received from me, the same. The same. No, he said, 
I, this charge, give I did, Timothy, my son, that you find to flame the gift of God that was imparted, that was bequeathed you by the laying on of hands of the presbytery. The realm will come, but sustaining the realm is a function of the law of life that that realm brings. Many never align to that law. So they receive every day, but the same way they receive, they lose. Even when Jesus heals people, he says, go and sin no more. Because that realm of divine health is sustained by righteousness. If you go back to sin, this ceiling will not make for the next one. To walk in divine health, there is a law of righteousness that must be kept. To receive healing can be on a platter, but to walk in divine health, it carries a law. There is a consecration requirement. Many believers that should have been mighty tested terrible dimensions in God but could not sustain it. And after a while, it vaporizes. And they are wondering what happened. They violated the Holy Ghost when he was giving them commands in their spirits. Because every dimension comes with a consecration requirement. The reason you see people talk experiences is like a caricature is because they know what to say but they refuse to align with the consecration requirement if there is a distortion between your utterance and what the spirit is brewed on your inside there will be no manifestation this is where the work of the spirit begins from the ability to harmonize what is said with the consecration requirement that that realm you provoke brings but many have a distortion. So it looks as if Christianity is a mockery. But it's not true. It is worked. Thank you for watching this very video we brought away. We believed you were mightily blessed. Contained in this message are steps and principles you could apply to your life and get the desired result that is required to take you into the next level of your spiritual journey and walk with God. Once again, thank you for watching this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe to this channel. And most importantly, share this video with friends, family and the loved ones. We would love to hear from you. Share your thoughts down below in the comment section. I will see you in our next video.